Over a century ago, this bicycle would have been considered very old. This Wolf American was made in 1897, and despite that fact, it looks pretty much exactly like the bicycles of today. All the parts are there. You got your bottom bracket, your chain, your front sprocket, rear sprocket. Aside from minor differences like wooden rims, we haven't had to change very much on bicycles since. Yet when this bike was sold, it would have been referred to as a safety bicycle. Usually when something's called that, its predecessor was sketchy. Well, that would be this. The high wheel, otherwise known as the penny farthing, rose to prominence in the 1860s, and yes, it was so sketchy that its successor was called the safety bicycle, and today, we're gonna talk all about it. Now, this particular bicycle does resemble what you would have seen in the 1880s, although it is a reproduction made in the 1960s. But aside from the headset and a few other odds and ends, this is mostly what it would have looked like, right down to the solid rubber tires. Today, I wanna to show you all about the Penny Farthing. I wanna ride one, but this one's too big for me to ride, and so let me show you mine. So this is my penny farthing, and as you can see, it's more my size, which is important because your inseam places a hard limit on the diameter of the wheel. For example, Sam Pilgrim could ride a much bigger high wheel than I can. This is also completely modernized. It has pneumatic tires, a welded frame, much better bearings, and it's also lighter and more durable. It's also a heck of a lot cheaper. Back in the 1860s, a penny farthing would have cost you about five grand if we adjust for inflation. That's many times what a horse would have cost back then. And this provides nowhere near the utility of a horse. A horse can pull a cart, can navigate any type of terrain. A penny farthing could kind of be used for recreation or to get around flat city streets. And that's mainly what they were used for back then. It was a recreational activity for the wealthy. These would have been handmade, sometimes specific to the size of the rider, because as I said, they're not all that adjustable. Yes, there were other velocipedes that preceded the penny farthing, none of them that reached the prominence that this did. And in fact, they called this an ordinary bicycle in its heyday. Actually, ordinary bicycle, because it wasn't until after the safety bicycle had largely replaced the penny farthing that bicycle journalists and enthusiasts needed a term to differentiate it, and so they called it the high wheel or the penny farthing. Now, even if the penny farthing would have been made affordable back in those days, there are a lot of reasons to assume that it would not have grown in popularity the way that the safety bicycle did. For one, you wouldn't have seen a lot of women riding these because they always had skirts on and they would have been up really high and I needn't explain the rest. The skirt could also get wrapped up in the front wheel, which would be bad. Not only that, but all of these were fixed gear. They didn't have brakes and the crank set just moves with the wheel. And so if you wanted to slow down, you would put back pressure on the pedals like you would on a fixed gear or track bike. Except on a penny farthing, if you put too much back pressure on the pedals, it'll actually lift the back end up and send you over the handlebars and then you break your collarbone and get surgery while biting down on a block of wood because it was the 1800s. And so rather than trying to stop the thing, you'd be better off attempting an evasive maneuver on the least maneuverable bike ever made. I mean, as you steer, your legs have to move with the crank set. And so it's not like you can turn really sharp on this thing. Now there are people in modern times that race these and those races are gnarly. I mean, even if they put brakes on these, you'd either have a rear brake that did nothing or a front brake that made the bike flip over forwards. Even in the 1800s when a fish hook was a suitable children's toy, People were like, I'm not getting on that thing. Sketchiness aside, the penny farthing is actually very interesting, and there are a few things about its construction that make it better than a lot of modern bikes. Let's start with the similarities between the penny farthing and the unicycle. So I've never done a deep dive into unicycles. I have no idea who invented them, but I would imagine they took the fork out of a penny farthing and stuck a seat on top of it because that's pretty much all a unicycle is. You can see that the wheel on both a unicycle or a penny farthing use exactly the same hub and then the cranks and pedals are attached to it 
That's the entire extent of the drivetrain. There's no chain, there's no sprocket, there's no freewheel. It's like pretty much the most reliable cycling apparatus you can make besides a unicycle. Now, not only is this more mechanically sound than a safety bicycle, but it's also got a huge wheel, which would have soaked up a lot of the bumps in the bad rows that they had back in the 1800s. And that was one of the main benefits of the penny farthing when it rose to popularity, was that big wheel size. Its predecessor, the Bone Shaker, they had these big adult balance bikes called Dandy Horses. Those would have only been good on the smoothest of pathways. It wasn't until much later on that you started seeing pneumatic tires, which were a huge benefit in terms of ride quality. Despite the benefits of that larger wheel size, roads back then were pretty bad, and so you would have taken whatever comfort you could get. That was pretty much only in the saddle. The saddles were flexy, they had springs in the rear, and some of them are quite beautiful. Again, everything back then was kind of made by hand in a shop, and so it had character and it was just cool. And so as these rose in popularity and you kind of saw them around in every city, it became more apparent to the general public what the benefits were. I mean, you could cover a ton of ground, you didn't have to feed it. It must have looked like a lot of fun. And so when a safer, more practical alternative was introduced, the safety bicycle, it's pretty obvious why it just blew up and pretty much took over everything. But back in the penny farthing's heyday, this is what bicycle enthusiasts considered an ordinary bicycle. This was what they were used to. And when the safety bicycle was invented, I wish I could go back to that year and look at the pink bike comments. They're actually calling it a safety bicycle? Yeah, let's just sterilize everything. What's next, they're gonna put brakes on it? Now this thing is seriously fun. Like, I really enjoy riding it. It's a completely different feeling. Definitely a novelty. And I have shown you all my novelty bikes in a different video. The swing bike, the tall bike, the half bike. This is another one I like riding and I can't believe I never had one sooner. I mean, it's really a different feeling. Now one benefit of this penny farthing, without question, it is supremely comfortable. I could do this all day. It doesn't take any energy. The seat's really comfortable. You're sort of reclined. If I were relying on this to get to work and I had to go up and down hills and over terrible roads and avoiding people, I suspect it would lose its novelty fairly quickly. Yeah, these are pretty bad for climbing hills, even really small hills. You can tell by how it is. You're actually pushing the wheel in the direction that you are pedaling. So you pedal with your right foot and you are moving the wheel left. You pedal with your left foot and you're moving the wheel right and to counteract it, you're pulling on the handlebars, you can knock them right out of alignment. I don't know if that's a problem unique to my penny farthing, but quill stems are easy to knock out of alignment, and back in the 1800s, this wasn't even as advanced. As for its performance on mountain bike trails, ooh, ooh, okay. The 32 inch wheel is actually kind of good, but there's this little tiny wheel in the back. Oh, whoa. Not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Punchy little climb. Oh, no prayer. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, let's see if I can get up enough momentum here. Ugh. So if for whatever reason I had no choice but to use bikes from my freak bike fleet to get to work, this would actually rank below several other bikes. Even for a novelty bike, it's impractical. Yet, at one point in history, this was the predominant means of two-wheeled human-powered transportation. And because many people did partake in cycling back then, they were passionate about it, an entire industry did spring up around it, and those were the shops that eventually built and serviced the safety bicycles. They became much more popular and practical later on. I wanna give a special thanks to Ralph and the Little Congress Bicycle Museum in Tennessee. They have completely original examples like this Wolf American and expertly restored down to the thread count examples like this Hopalong Cassidy and many more. I'll leave the information below. I hope you found this video useful and informative and if you didn't, I hope you were at least entertained. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time. Now it's interesting that anytime you see clips of the penny farthing, you hear music like this, 
which was made like 50 years after its heyday. The penny farthing is truly ancient. It was made before it was frowned upon to smoke cigarettes while teaching kindergarten. Actually, it was made shortly after kindergarten was invented.